Hey, yo, it's a timeshare takeover. Next episode is going to be at the beach. Cheers. And just like every other time, we are back. My name is Charbel Milan. Today we got... Agent Dooley. Alexis Montoya. William Rivera. And we're here for episode five. Just like always, we want to go ahead and thank everybody who's been tuning in. And to you guys, we're going to take a shot. You're the only one with the light liquor. Ah. Yeah. Wow, we like those. Not right. So this week's all about digital products. So just to get right into it, right? Digital money, digital products, Wi-Fi lit. How do you guys feel like people can leverage the idea of a digital product in this day and age? I'm going to start off with Will just because, you know, digital man himself. Leverage digital products. I feel like right now um, digital products are like the easiest thing to get into because unlike drop shipping or Amazon FBA, there's no inventory. You literally create the product. So like from from my example, you know, I have Ecom Degree University. Um, I promote it with my brand and it's like every time, you know, I put it out there or I sell it because it's digital it's like literally an asset you know i created it once and it's just there forever you know this one guy on twitter he said you know you need to get really good at building things once that you can sell infinitely and that's what digital products allow you to do um it's literally the definition of like working smarter and not harder you know i, I create it once people asking for the link i send it to them and then boom you know it's already there if i want to update it i can update it and you know there's 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 like broad digital products that you can create. You know, I've seen people create like spreadsheets that are helpful for people that are doing stocks. And it's literally just a, sh a Google sheet that they created, coded something with it, but it's something they created once and they've sold an, an infinite amount of time. So you definitely want to get into that niche of having some type of digital product. But um, it also comes with, uh, you're going to have to like brand it somehow, either with your own personal brand or like the company that you revolved that digital product around. So did, did you always look at it that way? Or was it once like you started going and you created the course and then you realized like, hey, it's a year later and I'm still making sales, making sales, making sales. Is that when you started to look at like the whole digital aspect differently? Or did you always kind of have that in mind? Yeah, I mean, at first I just created it because so many people were hitting me up to help them and I couldn't help everybody. So I was like, let me just create this program where if someone needs help, then I can just send them the link and it's just step by step you know, everything. But yeah, over time, I've looked back and realized like, wow, like this thing that I created in literally 2018, I've sold it over 800 times. And, you know, I've put besides the upfront work that you have to put into it to, to create something, I haven't really worked on it that much. Yeah, I've updated it, uh, you know, a few times here and there, but um, it's literally been an asset to me since 2018 to now. And it's only growing and growing. That's amazing. Yeah. Damn. Yo, speaking of digital products, I know you're working on a big digital product that you're about to drop. Tell us a little something about the case study. Yeah, so I'm currently working on a, a case study on how I did 85000 in sales this past summer uh, on just Amazon. So on Amazon this past summer, I sold a, quite a few things. And on this case study, I'm basically going to be showing people how what products I sold, how much I sold them for, um, how I calculated my profits, how I sourced my products, et cetera. And then on this product, you're going to be able to see step-by-step uh, step on how you could do the same thing too, uh, exactly how I did it on this upcoming um, you know, new year. So that's something I've been putting work into. I'm probably going to be dropping that in on Black Friday. I, I kind of want to <laughs> ask you the same question. When you were in the process of doing those sales, was it, did you have that in mind or was it just kind of organic? Like you realized like, hey, I got a good product research method because I'm over here doing 85K in a summer. Yeah, so I mean, the product research method I did was basically scanning barcodes um, at the department stores and seeing if it actually had resale value. So when I figured out like that works and I, so many people ask me and other people, how do we find these products? Um, I was just like, you know, I'm gonna just drop a case study and I actually got the idea from Will, and he was telling me, yo, if you just drop a case study, it's going to help out. It's going to solve all your problems. You won't have to, um, you know, basically push away people and not have to answer their questions. So case study is going to come in clutch. So, like, 
you get it, you have an idea for a product, you scan the barcode, and then you look it up on various sites like Amazon and whatever else is popping yeah. on. Amazon, eBay, that's about it. Facebook. And then you just kind of compare the margins. Right. Damn. Dooley, how's uh how's digital products been hitting for you? I know you got the similar situation as they do. Yes, I mean, <clears throat> like I would say, digital products, I've made more with Side Money University, which is my you know, digital product, than real estate, literally. Um, I have yet to find anything that's as lucrative as it. Um, like I said, I, I probably, I'm not afraid to say it, I, I, to put together my course and record the videos, it probably took around two days in terms of time length. And the fact that, you know, it's done probably close to a quarter million now, it's astronomical, you know? And the fact that it takes so little work up front um, but the, the gains are just infinite. It's almost like too good to be true, you know? And then the fact that you can double decorate with affiliate programs and get testimonials and, and just, and just grow it with your personal brand. Like how Will said, he, he said, you can have, you can have the greatest like product ever, but if you stamp it with a super personal brand, there's going to be two types of marketing that's going to like make you money. It's going to be the marketing. It's going to be the marketing where it's like, okay, the way this person marketed it is the reason I want to buy it. Or it's the person that's marketing this makes me want to buy it no matter what it was, right? So there's two different things. And if you have both of those, you have an easy six-figure a year, maybe even a month virtual product. What I mean by that is like Grant Cardone could drop, he could drop a real estate course, right? It could be, because I have a real estate course, I have a, a real estate program as well, six-figure wholesaling playbook. So let's say he dropped something that was half the size of it and it was just trash, He's still going to get sales because he's built up such a personal brand where people will pay for what he's created just because of who he is, right? And that's what just goes with having a personal brand. But then there's other people that you may never know, you don't know who they are, but they run a stupid fire advertisement, a sponsored ad, and you buy it just because their advertisement was great. So imagine if you were able to attract people that don't know you, but then also get the organic sales from people that do know you. So that's what I've been trying to kind of juggle with my course as well. But, I mean, like I said, the amount of effort that you can put into a product one time and sell it infinitely, I have yet to find any other avenue that gives you that type of return on investment. Considering I literally put zero dollars into creating it, it's just a bunch of videos, but, you know, my teachable website's 99 bucks a month, you know? So I just feel like we're blessed to be in a, a time where you can even have this type of opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Selling education, I feel like it's just beginning. And I feel like it's going to go as deep as infiltrating our school system, like how Google and I think it's just Google is like creating like some type of online university now. So basically you take that university and now you have that stamp of approval from Google and now you can work for them. It's almost better. Yeah. So I think that you can take a Google course for $1,000 and get it and get a job with them making six figures a year. Why would you go to school for four years to make 70 grand a year? You know, so I think it's going to go as deep as, you know, upsetting are the way that we learn things, because there are a lot of people that are out here hustling, doing it and really like, you know, uh, hitting the pavement, doing it. And why not learn from that direct source rather than a third party that's learning it from this person and then redistributing the information to you? Right. So I think it's a great opportunity for sure. See, I like that you brought up a really interesting point, and I kind of want all three of you guys to touch on this. You said that a personal brand can have two aspects. It can have the aspect where the person's popping off, so it's like, hey, I'm going to stand behind this person because they're lit. They're making money. They, you know, they're famous, whatever it is, like Grant Cardone, yeah. right? But then there's the aspect where it's like, this is just really good information, so I'm going to follow this ad because, hey, if this person was able to do it, I can do it too. What do you guys think is more... Not lucrative, but what do you guys think is has more potential going into like 2021, ending 2020? I think personal brand by far, mm -hmm. just because like of what Dooley said, you know, if, if you go the company route where it's like, you know, I'm going to create a great product on e-commerce and let's say it is a great product and you're able to market it well and it sells well, you're not going to be able to leverage um, that to drop like a, a real estate program or like a mindset program. But if, if you build your personal brand... Um, like you said, if people like you, if you're putting out good content, anything you put out that you attach a price tag to is going to sell just because of, you know, what you do on the daily. And also, like, 
on the if you brand something with a company and not yourself, you can't really just post your daily life on it. Whereas like literally my personal brand is every single thing I do. Every everything I do attributes to my personal brand, like where I go eat, where I travel. All that makes me sales. And it's different if you don't brand it but with yourself, you know. So it's yeah. like building trust it's like with getting, your audience. It's like getting paid to live, basically. Okay. Literally, like, the personal brand, like, this is the thing. You can have the best, most fire course ever, right? Greatest information. You have everything cataloged. But the thing is, how do you, let's say I have the best course ever. How do you, how do you know it's the best course ever? Like, how would you find out that information? So I think the only way I could find out is if I knew that you were kicking ass. Right? So yeah, it's but let's say like, really the only way so like you a, really if I don't know, know you? is if you bought it. Oh, I see. So the thing is, I'm mean. limiting my sphere to only people who have purchased my product and liked it enough to voluntarily spread it to their peers. But the thing is, I can drop a shitty course, but because I have a personal brand, it's gonna sell off the hooks because of the personal brand that I've built behind it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the thing is, you have to go so much harder and be more creative marketing something as, let's say, a nobody because you don't have a personal brand because they don't know you. There's no reason that they should trust you. There's no reason that they should they, – they don't know you. You know what I'm saying? They have no data to go off of. So the only thing that they can do to know is they have to actually purchase it and take a risk themselves and, you know, uh, take in the information and utilize is it worth the money that I spent. You know what I'm right. saying? So I like the personal brand because it's like it's 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 like this all knowing thing. Like anything that like what we was saying, right? I created a real estate course and then a course on surveys. They're literally like ones you're making fifty bucks doing a taste test. One you're making seven thousand dollars wholesaling properties. Two totally different things, but they're both going to sell because it's backed by the Asian Dooley brand the brand that's been giving sauce to Instagram for the past four years. You know what I'm saying? So the personal brand is so strong or so much more prominent than just having a good product because at the end of the day, you don't know if the product's good unless you buy it. And by the time you buy it, it's already done. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I think that creating a personal brand is going to be the only way to survive in 2021 because people are starting to, re it's getting more, it's getting easier and easier to be generic. You can create a Shopify store yeah. in three hours, right? It's easy, but I think that people that are going to survive are the people that actually took their time to purchase products and try them out and take custom pictures, have their own models, have their own layout, and the people that put that extra effort into creating an actual brand are going to be people that survive. These little niche stores that pop up around Christmas, people know them now. People can actually tell when it says powered by Shopify, they know what it means now. So I think it's going to be harder and harder to fool you know, your audience you're going to have to give true value that gives them a reason to support the stuff that you're putting out. And that's why I think creating a brand, creating yeah. a business, creating an infrastructure is going to be the only way to actually survive because people are realizing that you can go on Fiverr and get a logo and get a V80 cold call. That's not a business, not a brand. You know, you spend 20 bucks. So I think people are starting to realize the amount of effort it takes. Yeah. To really have an operation going. Yeah, to have a real, true business brand that's focused on giving, um, you know, customers true value. Oh, yeah, I love it. How do you, how do you feel about the whole personal brand? Because well, it's hard. It's easy to get lost, man. Because especially with people like Grant Cardone, it's like, you know, especially, I mean, hey, uh, I'm not trying to get sued, but like from what <laughs> I've been hearing, like things aren't going so well. So it's like you do want the personal brand, but you can't rely on the personal brand because then you're kind of misleading. But how, how do you feel? I feel like having a personal brand is super important. Like I've learned from Will and Dooley and I saw like uh, basically when people go to your Instagram page, you know, they want to see what you're doing and uh, what you're currently up to. And when you show them that you have um, testimonials and you show them that you're actually doing this with them it gives them like that trust, you know what I mean? And then they feel more, they feel more trustworthy joining your program. They feel more, um, connected to you because it's like, okay, if he's doing it and I know um, I can do it too because the same thing he's doing, he's teaching in his program. So when they go to your Instagram they and you they scroll down, they're going to see on my page, oh, he's been doing this, right? They, that he's always been on this resale game. So as they scroll up, they're just going to see improvement. 
So having a personal brand is important because if you could show that, um, they're going to be 10 times more trustworthy to you and support your brand. I could have like the shittiest course out, but because I show all these results and this, um, what, what would be a word for it? Like backtrack, I guess you could say. Like proof of concept. Yeah, proof. Yeah. Yeah. Um, proof that I've been doing this, they're going to pay me. And if you have that on your page, you're going to be good and set. So what about like, we're ending Q4, it's 2020, it's been a tough year, but for some reason, the second half has been honestly great. I, I mean, for me, I think it's been great for you guys. Yeah, it's been and great, I, yeah. I want to start this question off with you, because I know you got a lot of fire in store. But how do you feel about this upcoming climate with, you know, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Christmas time? You know, I know we got a lot of good stuff in store. A lot of people are about to come up. A lot of people about to make friends. Oh God, bro! That's this is all uh, I gotta say. Black Friday is gonna be last, the, pro the producers are about to make last that. year. Black Friday, Cyber Monday, um, over nine billion dollars were spent online. Jeez. And a lot of people don't know that most companies they make more money in November than they do all year. Just add it up. Wow. So, I mean, if you have a brand already, then you're about to eat. And if you don't have a brand already, now is the best time to, you know start to try to sell something, anything, because people are going to be online shopping. And especially because of COVID, people are forced to only shop online. Mm -hmm. So they're going to mm -hmm. be shopping even more. And then um, this is why I also encourage you to hop on Amazon because like Dooley said, you know, it's not so easy to just create a three, like spend three hours and create a Shopify store and just do a pop-up store and try to sell something. People already know what you're doing now. But if you're an Amazon seller, you can hop on to a listing that's already credible, like Fiji Water or whatever, and become a seller on that listing. And you're going to benefit from the Black Friday, Cyber Monday sales that are going to happen because, um, you know, those things are already credible. And Amazon's just going to get hella traffic this month because of Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So, you know, if you're not selling on Amazon yet, you're going to want to because they're going to break records this year. I mean, if you actually look at the Black Friday, Cyber Monday numbers um, mm -hmm. from the past five years to now, Literally every year it goes up a couple billion. A couple billion. Yeah, like oh, e-commerce is like the trend is like this. The yeah, money bro. that people spend every year is just going up, up, and up. That's why when people say like, yo, is this shit dead? I just laugh. Cause I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's literally just the beginning moving. stages. Like, bro, people are spending more and more money online every single year. Like yeah. it's only there's only more money to be made. Yeah, and the pandemic just creates like a once in a lifetime like opportunity. Like people right. are forced. Not only do they want to already, but now people that like go some people like going out and you know participating in the chaos. But now people are pretty much forced to shop online. You know, my stuff is not mostly online. You know, in terms of like reselling stuff like that. I'll but I'll probably you know jump on a, a Amazon listing and try to hit a little 15, 20, 30 k. You know, what I'm saying and dip out. You know, what I'm saying I'll probably obviously you know do sales on my courses and programs or whatnot. But um, um, but um, sorry, it took me off track. It's all good. But um, listings Amazon. The thing is, it's this time of year where you tell like who's a producer and who's a consumer. Like people that have the wish list, they're ready to buy stuff. That's not me. Like I'm ready. Like how can I capitalize yeah. on this opportunity? Like people, <laughs> some people started a month ago, and they've got product testimonials. They've got reviews. <laughs> they've got a logo. They've got a seasoned ad account. Like they are ready to do like a million plus dollars <laughs> in the month of November. And then some people are just getting their list together. What am I going to get my mom, my dad? Like being a producer and being a consumer, uh, you know, when you're, most people are just consumers. They don't really produce much. They don't produce content. Yeah. They don't yeah. produce products. They don't, you know, and that's fine. But when you're a producer and a consumer, you're able to see the world in this 360 view, you know? And I feel like it's taught me a lot. And I think I read something on Twitter. It was like, you can't really understand America until you understand business because, you know, America is built on businesses. That's why SBA loans were fucking 10 bands, but a, 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 a stimulus was 1,200. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because literally it's backed by businesses. That's why the tax code is literally set for businesses. You can make 400K a year and pay less than someone that made 50K because yeah. the tax code is written in a way where we want people to take the risk and create businesses that's going to stimulate the economy. So... You know, for me, I don't have too much to say about actual Black Friday. That's up to these guys because they're more, you know, the online sales and stuff like that. 
But I'm definitely, even though I'm not in that field, if you think I'm not going to try to eat and hit a lick <laughs> during Black Friday, you got me fucked up. You know Bro. what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is, man, just think about producing, not only consuming. Like you, It's crazy. People are really getting ready to kill it in November, and it's going to be interesting to see you know, e-commerce take off this year again. Yeah, yeah. speaking of e-commerce, sorry to cut you off, ecomdegreeuniversity.com, right? Any For time sure. of the year. It's not too late. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's what? It's the 4th, the 5th? It's the 6th. If you if you cop it today and you go through it in like two days and then you make your... You still have time. Yeah, you, you yeah. still have time. Uh, Black Friday is until November 27th. You get hella time. Slick, go to www.ecomdegreeu.com so you go through my funnel. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really be taking people through my site no more. <laughs> go to the funnel, all right? Do yourself a favor. <laughs> but what were, Bro, what were you going to say? So I was going to... Um, when Dooley said a lot of people are consumers, not producers, bro, a month ago, I was already thinking about Black Friday. So on the podcast before, I've spoken about the patio heaters, right? Right. So I've sold, let's just say, I think I've sold like 65% of my inventory. And the other, uh, what what is that, 35%? Yeah. I've held. Yeah. And that... And on Black Friday, I'm relisting all that shit and I'm selling it on Amazon because I'm going to basically all the other sellers that were below me, they've already sold out probably or mm. they're they're low on inventory. But um, me, I was like already thinking about this stuff. I was like, all right, I'm going to hold a portion of it. So that way I get mo- majority of my capital back to respend on more. And then I'm going to list the rest towards like you know black friday cyber monday time yeah, smart and then on top of that you know we were just talking about personal branding well i dropped these hoodies just a month ago the just resell it hoodies and i made them super limited to where it was like if you don't have a hoodie you're ass type thing <laughs> so and i and rec which is my program right has 550 students and i only dropped uh 60 hoodies and they sold out so think about the other 490 students that don't have a hoodie. So on Black Friday, I was like, bet, I'm, just on Black Friday, I'm re-releasing the hoodies, different style, and I'm going to make them even more limited, but I'm going to make them higher up on price. And I'm just going to drop that link in REC, and I guarantee you they're going to sell out. But all this, all this like being a producer, it takes planning. You know, you can't, it's going to be kind of hard to think of something to sell in just two weeks, you know what I mean? But yeah. you could use this information for next year because there's a lot of things I didn't do last year that I wrote down that I was like, all right, in November or November this year, I'm going to be doing this. And, you know, some of it went right, some of it went wrong, but you're always going to go through obstacles and roller coasters. Like, I had no idea I was going to sell patio heaters this year. I had no idea I was going to hold 35% of inventory to sell on Black Friday, but I knew. On Black Friday, I was going to sell something. So if you just, you know, do the research and go through e-com degree, right, um, you'll see, you'll learn a lot of things that you can apply next year. So you don't go out sad. So you're not a consumer. You're producing shit. Mm-hmm. And as long as you're producing shit every single year and going, like, snapping, you're going to be straight. So just keep that in mind and just, you know, use what I just did as an example. You know, I dropped this a hoodie. Um, I dropped this hoodie a month ago. And I knew for a fact I was going to redrop them, make them more expensive, more exclusive, just for my program. And I know they're going to sell out. See, I really like that concept, and I kind of want you to expand on it. Was the mindset behind saving the patio heaters to shoot the price up a little higher or just to have all the customers so that you know you sell out instead of having the listing up and not even knowing if you're going to sell out? Well, I mean, I really don't even think like a negative way sometimes when it comes to product. I know... Uh, if a product is selling, I'm going to be able to sell it, whether I'm making $20 or $70. I know I'm going to make profit. So with the patio heaters, I held a percentage because I knew other sellers were going to sell theirs quick. So I made sure I held a few. So when um, Black Friday comes around, I'm able to list those products and be maybe one of the 20 that actually have the product in hand to ship out rather than being... Uh, one of the 50 right now that, you know, is low on supply. I see what you mean. Uh, That's smart, man. See, yeah. a lot of people don't think like that. Yeah, I mean, bro, I spoke about it on the last podcast. Like, I told you guys I was going to hold patio heaters because I knew they were going to go up in price. And right now, I still have, there's still patio heaters out right now to be bought. And people are sleeping on it. It's ass. 
<laughs> <laughs> I just think I'm, people just don't think long term. Like, yeah. that's the biggest thing. Like, people literally, when they DM me, it's probably the same for you guys. They're just like, hey, what's the least amount of money and the least amount of effort <laughs> and the easiest thing I can do to make money tomorrow? And that's just not possible. You know what I'm saying? And when people ask me that, I almost lose respect for them. Because it's like, <laughs> you're asking someone who's a fucking, at this point, a fucking online veteran, say, hey, what's the easiest way to do what you did? There's no easy fucking way. <laughs> you got to put in the work. got to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, I always, I literally gave away the information to my course for like eight months before I ever released the course just to get people to fuck with me, just to get people to say, hey, I fuck with Agent Dooley. I don't even know the guy, but he's helped me make money. Yeah. That's it. I cannot, there's no way you can have a personal brand if your brand has not created any anything to make your standard of living go up, whether they create commercials that make you laugh or whether they give you information on politics or whether they just literally take information from one news source and make it readily available or they make content you enjoy or they educate you. There has to be some type of value exchange. People want to create a brand but don't want to help people. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. make sense. Your you know what I'm saying? brand has to be backed by value content, which is what he's talking about. And that's why like, I invest every single month. Like, I literally have a full-time content guy and I just make sure that I'm putting out more value content than anyone, like, on social media. Like, I'm posting, you know, two, three reels a week. I'm posting YouTube videos because that value content is what converts people to, to buy. Because if you're putting out so much fire for free, people wonder, <laughs> okay, then mm-hmm. what's his paid information like, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, and unless you got a fat budget to where you can run, like, 10000 a month on ads and get people to buy your stuff, you need to put out value content to convert customers. And even the people that run ads, what are they running ads to? They're running ads to value content. They pitch you in the ad. Yeah, they free, give you some value and then it's a soft pitch at the end. Or it's some value and then a webinar that's <laughs> extreme value and then they pitch you at the end. Yep. So uh, everything's backed by value. You know, All good products are backed by value. See, here's the thing. I just heard the word webinar and that's about to bring up a fantastic topic. So before <laughs> that, we got to take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grabbing the dark. They hate me, man. They hate me, <laughs> but they love it. Webinars. Hey, man, listen, man. Go to sidemoneyuniversity.com. Type in a timeshare. 50% off until uh, until Black Friday. Yep. And that Black message Friday. was sponsored by hey, Black Friday, I'm running a stupid sale, so check your emails. Yeah, Black Friday, I'm going dumb. I'm going to have these hoodies. I almost had you mix. Some other shit. Black Friday, check your text messages. Yeah, right. Man, dude, I don't want this guy to get into SMS before I do, bro. <laughs> <laughs> let me have one thing, bro. <laughs> this nigga Will does stuff, we gotta copy him. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. Like, let, let us try it first, bro. Will's broken, dude. It's just, broken. I was just talking about SMS, bro. bro. Wait, wait, wait. Pull oh, you. shit, my bad. He's broken, bro, dude. When... We just gotta accept that he's broken. Will's code. just a he's sniper, bro. He's a sniper. I be thinking about shit. I'm like, yo, this is a good idea. And he'll show me, look. <laughs> <laughs> yo, right, look. Yo, we were, at, we were at dinner the other night. And I was like, I was talking to this one guy about Ooh. how they were uh, listing these cars uh, or the cargo vans for Amazon. He was like, that's crazy. Two days ago, I listed two vans. I was yeah. like, yeah. He was like, oh, yeah, I already do it. Now I got two guys. got cargo vans. Yeah, it's pretty straight. I was like, I didn't even know that. <laughs> oh, my God. Niggas do that full time. He just did that for fun. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, tell stuff, though. Yo, cheers. Uh. But no, I think SMS is going to get closer and closer to email. People are going to have like, I think Gary Vee's kind of already doing it. People are going to have like text messages that are clogged up with like yeah. random messages and marketing, and bro, I don't know how bro, it's gonna. Gary, I don't know how it's gonna be because low key people are not gonna like SMS, their bro. Though, text right messages. now, there's you still got like two three years to where you can make bread off of oh, SMS, God. bro. But I do think in the next five years, SMS is going to get to the point where it's like emails mm-hmm. and it's too spammy and a software company is going to come out with uh, with a solution to that. Yes. Just like there's companies that us, like they solve the problem of you getting spam and stuff. Yeah, yeah. like Gmail has a whole spam and yeah. promotions yeah. folder. Or maybe even Apple is going to offer a premium service where they filter your messages for you. Where it's like only yeah. if that, wow. They already have that though. Which would be have, fine. They they have a thing where it's like junk messages or it's like scam likely. Yeah, that's gonna yeah. be for messages. Nah, it's for gonna messages. be it's gonna be better than that though because yeah, yeah. SMS I mean, that's is, SMS like is a... gonna be used to market like crazy. Like even for my 
real estate company, when we text blast, we have to change our template every hundred messages because if we send the same message like, over and over again, it starts to you know get picked yeah. up. At, at it's spam. getting more strict it. too. Yeah, it's, it's gotten more strict because yeah. more people are getting into it. Like there's a yeah, TCPR just, compliance. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that? So that basically is just like rules where if I'm gonna start SMS marketing to someone, I need to make sure that on my funnel or on my website. Before they type in their phone number, there's a message below or somewhere on the web page where it says you're accepting the fact that if you put in your phone number right here, you're going to receive SMS marketing from my company. And if you don't have that on your website or your funnel or anything, you're it's technically complete. illegal if you're texting people um, without their consent. Yeah. Oh, so it's Damn. a consent like agreement. For, my, yeah. for, for the, the software I use, Lead Sherpa now, we have to have our name and the name of our company and text stop to opt out in mm -hmm. the text message yeah you need that and too. if they and then and if they message stop then the platform will not allow us to text them again yeah see that's that is good because i keep getting all these ones where it's like yo you just are qualified for a thousand three hundred click this link and yeah. i'm like bro that's literally illegal <laughs> like it is, whoever's sending yeah. you there i don't know what's going to happen in the scammers, sms world but there's going to be something like more personal a more personal version of text messaging as regular text yeah. messaging starts to be more about marketing. There's bread in SMS, though. But right? we'll see, yeah, Gary well, V's I, been on it for the... Yeah, yeah, he was get, on it like three years ago. Yeah, yeah I've been I getting think, texts from Gary V past two years, bro. Yeah, he's like, you can do it. And what's <laughs> like, yeah. no <laughs> no it, it, it backed by, too, bro? Gary V, he pitches his... He, he wears a shirt, actually, that has his phone number on it. No way. Yeah, that's um, that's like, how he markets yeah. it. And he tells you, you know, if you text this number... um. You're basically going to get like motivation every day. Yeah. It's backed by value. You know, you're probably going to get a hundred texts of motivation and advice, but then one of the messages is going to be a pitch. Yeah. Like, That's what's fire about it. Cause I'll get these texts, right? Sometimes I won't even open it, but then I'll see a text like I'm going live right now. I'm giving away boom. Mm -hmm. And then you I'll be like, up. shit, yeah. you know what? Let me go on Instagram and I'll check. Dude has so many people on live. I'm like, damn. Like, I wonder yeah. how many other people just got that text, just like me. Yeah, marketing is just about being at the right place at the right time, bro. And people yeah. are on their phones all the time. Like, it's kind of yeah, sad. They are. There's man. nothing that can really be SMS right There's now. There's nothing. And most you people can't check say their messages. Get it. Think about it, bro. If right. your phone vibrates right now, you're gonna pick it up. You're gonna look at it. <laughs> and <laughs> and if they, it's from a company, bro, yeah. then you just and, saw their message. And I think they said the average response time is like eight seconds, or like damn. the average view time yeah. of seeing a text. You know what I'm saying? So imagine texting, and this last time I'm talking about real estate, but texting 5,000 homeowners saying, hey, you want to sell your house? They look at that shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Even though they may not respond, they saw it. Whereas emails, some people only check it like once a week. Yeah, like some, people don't, some people don't have notifications right. on. And some people are get getting, a lot. Yeah, some people are getting so many emails that your email might not even pop up like on their Facts. screen. Like it's yeah. on page two. And there's yeah. so many like words, it's hard to even interpret who's sending it to you. But this one's like, hey, a number sending you this, this is my name, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. And that's the name of the game. Like I've really been learning, like, especially from our group chat together, like just the power of marketing and the art of marketing. Like for me, I just have a blitzkrieg approach. Like I just post, 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 post. Like people are making money. People are making money. People are making <laughs> money. And it doesn't matter, bro. You might be bored. You might be chilling your phone one day. You might be down bad because you lost your job right now. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna catch you. One day, one hour, one minute, we're going to need what I'm offering. I don't care yeah. if it's the... I actually saw yesterday, because you can see when someone signs up on your Teachable, I saw someone that um, actually signed up through my email market, uh, my email uh, that I sent you guys with. I sent, I think, 2,500 people. He signed up on my course a year ago, but he, he bought it through my email marketing campaign yesterday. It took <laughs> me a year to close that sale. I don't know who he was, but it took me a year of posting maybe... 15 times a day to close that one cell. Yeah. And that's just what it is. But imagine yeah. if you're doing that every single day from someone a year before. That's why when people want to do stuff like tomorrow or next week, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, it takes time to build relationships. To build a brand is building a relationship with your audience. Mm -hmm. and, and that takes time. You know what I'm saying? Like, have you guys seen Slim Jim, the, their, their Instagram profile? No. Nah. Slim Jim, mm -hmm. like, bro, I feel like that's how... Because I, I was the first person, not the first person to say it, I feel like I was the first one to bring up that, like, memes, I feel like, are the most viral piece of content ever. You did say that. Like, I feel like when, uh, what's his name? The dude that made the, the horse song. Lil, uh, Lil Nas? Yeah, Lil Nas. Yeah. Like, it started out as a meme. You know what I'm saying? But 
because memes are so viral, it blew up the song. Like almost like the 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 Pastor Hendrix memes. Like Future hasn't dropped shit in a minute, but just because Future's a meme, he's still popping. Like mm-hmm. memes are so viral because it's a language that every person, every language understands. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, I forgot my initial uh, 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 point was, honestly. But the thing is, oh, yeah, yeah, Slim Jim. Like, literally all they do is post memes. Like, their whole page is just a meme page. About Slim Jim? Yeah, in every, in every single post, it's like they, they hide the number 69 in there. Like, some childish shit. But the thing is, it pops, bro. It is the <laughs> only page I've ever seen that's an actual brand page that has, like, over a million followers. And it's just memes. But they're com. They have. I even did research. They have more comments than like most other people, like a million, because they're so interactive, and because everyone can respect and find humor in memes, and people are probably out there buying Slim Jims, tagging them, saying, "Yeah, long hashtag Long Boys," because it's funny. <laughs> you, know? you know what I'm saying? It's crazy, but people love to feel like people love. I think that if you can humanize your brand. And people can feel like they relate to this multi-million dollar corporation. They feel like they have to or they, they want to support you. And when I saw that they were using a meme page to do that, I was like, wow, that's so innovative. You'd never think it would work, but I'm seeing it in front of my eyes. You know, so it just goes to show, man, like marketing is an art. And sometimes you have to go out on a limb, do something different, but just do it right. And it can blow up, you know? So I just love this... Uh, studying goats and researching and doing trial and error and just seeing, you know, how you can, what makes people tick, what makes them want to click the buy button and how you can create a sustainable business off that. Yeah, it's see, very interesting. Dooley just brought up a great topic that I actually, I don't think we've ever really gotten into and that is conversion rate, right? Mm-hmm. So we talked about SMS, we talked about right now about memes, but what are some other conversion rate tactics that you guys have seen success in and that you guys have seen flop? I would say get a click funnel. Click funnel. Oh yeah, you've been laughing, <laughs> bro. Click funnels are. All right, I feel like right now websites are <laughs> overrated. If you have multiple products, like you need a sales funnel. You know, like you need to be because I ran into the problem where I have multiple digital products. You know, I got a mini course, I got a the full course, and then I got a blueprint. Right. So if someone comes into my DMs and they and they say like, "What's up?" or like, "Yo, I'm trying to get started." Now I have to decide in my head, like, okay, which product am I going to pitch them? Which product is good for them? The funnel literally solves that problem. I send them the link, and I know if they click on that link, they're going to get pitched all of my products. And literally, a website won't do that for you. But what's the difference in a website that has, hey, here's my three virtual products versus a funnel? What's the difference? The difference is, one, the funnel is going to get the information immediately. The website, bro, he can look at all your products, but you're not going to have their email, their phone number, any of that. So you're collecting information immediately. Also, a sales funnel is meant to be appealing to the eye. You know, it looks great on mobile yeah. where your website might not. And also, like, with your website, they have to literally navigate through it. And the funnel yeah. just makes it so easy. Is a funnel for just kind of like shoom, shoom, vertical? Shoom. It's, like, yeah. it's, it's kind of like uh, chronological it's order. Just vertical, ask for their information. Okay, cool. Boom. Next. <laughs> Another vertical. The, you know, one product one, if they say no, all right, cool. Next product, they say no, cool. It still is going to pitch them every single product yeah. until they find one that's right for them. I'm telling you, that's bro, interesting it's crazy. as fuck. Because I had a consultation call today about a guy that was saying, um, it was a, a John Sedino, I'm pretty sure you, you talked to him as well. Right. He was talking about, um, it was a call about, like he said he spends 30 minutes to an hour per client and he'll close them maybe for 200 bucks or whatever, but it takes a lot of time. So I was talking to him about like how, you know, it's good that he's making money. It's, it's no problem making money. When you're making money, you see that other problems arise. I'm, I don't want to spend yeah. five yeah. hours a day on calls if I'm making money. I, how can I make the same money or more but spend an hour? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, the first thing I was saying is just working smart. Like you're saying with the, uh, um, so what did you call it? Uh, the case study that you're creating. I uh, love pre-recorded things that you can create once. And sell over and over. I don't even really like consultation calls, honestly. Like, right. don't get me wrong. I get paid sixty bucks for thirty minutes, hundred bucks an hour. But it's it, to me, I, I don't like I don't like putting an hour to my time at all, or a time limit to my time at all. You know what I'm saying? Or a price or right. dollar, whatever. So I was saying, why don't, instead of you doing a call, 
Why not either have a funnel or have everything that you think that people would need to ask, put it into a video, five to 10 minutes, and put it on your website so that they can watch the video. And then maybe 70% of those people that want to book a call, they don't need to anymore. They know the information. Now they're ready to buy. Mm -hmm. And then the other 30%, okay, hop on a call, close yeah. them. But a lot of times it's not how much money can I make, it's how much money can I make with the least amount of time spent. Yeah. So that's why I don't have a funnel yet, which is what I want to get to, but on my course, at least it has a video. I have FAQ. Mm -hmm. I have the um, some things that are uh, free to view so you can at least you know get the gist of it. So it makes it so I don't want to answer 50,000 questions a day. I don't want right. to. Mm -hmm. I want to create some type of website funnel space where my clientele can view and, and from the thousands of people that I've, you know, uh, done business with, I take all those questions they've asked me, put it into one space, and then hope that that answers enough questions where they can just click the, the buy button, yeah. I wake up and have a and couple literally sales. literally, that's what, like, the funnel does for you. Like, you go to my funnel, it's a video of me. And if I don't answer all your questions in that video, yeah. you scroll down, there's an FAQ. <laughs> yeah, it gives all them the more. All the most re frequently asked questions. If you scroll down, testimonials. You scroll down, it just tells you to scroll up. You click a button, it's gonna bring you back up. <laughs> and then if you scroll down more, it's just more testimonials. And like the funnel basically does, I don't know if you've heard like the milk analogy, but it's basically like if you go to the grocery store, the milk's in the back for a reason, right? Because you might be going to the grocery store just for milk, but you're gonna walk by the chips, you're gonna walk by the snacks, you're gonna walk by a lot of things that, you know, <laughs> you gotta get hungry. That's crazy. And, and that, that's, that's, that's what the funnel's for, because like they might have. Clicked on my link because they want the course, <laughs> and boom, they cop the course. But shit, here's the blueprint for 27. You know? <laughs> oh God, that's like that's like the starburst at the, yeah, at the line. Here, here, here. And oh, then, don't forget your fruit. <laughs> oh, and then people are gonna be like, shit, I bet. And then they that's get the, so, they get the blueprint, and then oh, that's so interesting. And then I got this recording. <laughs> I used Yo. to charge people a thousand to come, but you get it for fifty. And then especially when you not only upsell, but you give them incentives yeah. to stockpile things. Yeah, what's well, like, hey, you that's you shit. got the blueprint. You're already here. And now because you got the blueprint, now you get X you, amount off the full yeah. course. You might as well just go ahead and get it. Bro. You know what I'm saying? And like, when you do that, it's, it's like, it's almost like they, they're they going to exit that funnel like, fuck. Like, yeah, I yeah. should have bought it because now when I go back, I have to pay full price. Yeah, so, so it's like, look, you didn't want to pay 300 in the beginning, but since you bought this, I'm going to give it to you half off, 150 and and but. I like how he talked about the scheduling calls because literally my funnel used to be mini course, full course, and then schedule a 15 minute call with me where basically I would help you and then I would see if you qualify for my three day workshop, right? It's a higher ticket offer, it's around $2,000, so it's much easier to sell over the phone and see who's the right fit for that. But then it got to the point where I'm booking two to five calls a day, right? Yeah. And I'm like, shit, I don't want to get on the phone two to five yeah. times a day. So I was like, wait, it's very inconvenient. let me let me think about what I can create once and sell infinite times. Because that's like you said, there's nothing that beats that. So I, I told my funnel guy, I was like, yo, take the schedule call shit off my funnel, bro. I'm not doing that shit. <laughs> and then true. I went on my website and I was like, what's something that I already created that I can just put a price tag on it and start upselling it? And then I looked at my website and I already had a zero to 100K blueprint created. It was free on my website because it used to be just a lead gen product. Yeah. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to just create another lead gen product. Fuck it. I, I changed the price of that blueprint on my website to 100. And then I put it on my funnel for 27. That funnel that used to be free has now made me an extra $500 this month. And I didn't do anything. I just added it to my funnel and put a price tag on it as an upsell. That's so I mean, when you mean lead gen, you mean you offer something for free. Some, some free value for the opportunity to get their data exactly. to possibly upsell them in the future. Exactly. So people so, don't think about that. So my zero to one hundred k blueprint, it used to be something where I basically over deliver because it's free, but it's still extreme value. I used to give it to people for free. They'd have to put in their email to get it. Now they're added into my email flow, which is automated, and they start receiving hella value from me. Eventually, everyone that uh, like I think my conversion rate for the blueprint was pretty high. It was around like twenty percent, meaning. 20% of everyone that got that free blueprint ended up buying something from me. And yeah, that's literally crazy. just from me giving them straight value, right? Those, are, ins Christ. those are insane. Number. And literally, my funnel numbers are crazy. Like, anyone that enters my funnel, 10% of those people are going to buy from me, right? And then those 10% that buy, 20% of them are going to buy the upsell. So the upsell rate's even higher than the, the first conversion rate. And then 20% of those people that buy the upsell... 
another twenty percent of those people are gonna buy the other up so as well. Ah, so it's almost like it's not even what you sell, it's how you it's sell, how you, sell it. how you present ah. yeah. the information. And it it's it's man, like really like I like this episode because it's just like it's like you have to type in you have to tap into human psychology. Literally. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like think about it. Like my, my girl, my girl, I like I'll even call her out. Like she'll see a purse for three hundred dollars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She won't buy that shit. But that just says four fifty crossed out three hundred. Let's get it. You know right. what I'm saying? But it's the same price that you didn't want to pay. But now, because you feel like if you don't buy it, you're missing out. FOMO is real, and if you can tap into human psychology and include FOMO in every single funnel advertisement that you have, it's interesting. You want people to feel like you have an opportunity that needs to be taken care of right now. And the biggest two things are, are scarcity, right? Like I only have yeah. a certain amount of spots or, 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 or a discount, you know, where this is a, or a limited time, limited you know, time. So I want to ask you guys, um, hopefully I can take over your role here for a second. Yo, you do what you want. <laughs> like what is one like super marketing tip that you feel like you've used in your virtual businesses to where it's like, okay, this is something that I use over and over again that gives me results. If you give a tip or a scenario, Shit. and then we'll just go around. I, I would, mean, mostly. I know for a fact, me posting on Instagram on like what I'm buying and what I'm selling, I always close people. I always bring in more leads because if I'm showing people what I'm buying and what I'm making money off, I'm giving that product for free. And mm-hmm. it pisses a lot of people off because they're like, damn, bro, like you're giving out the sauce, the, the sauce right? But then I'm like, bro, you know, there's enough for everyone to make money. So mm-hmm. you're not going to get all of them, and I'm not going to get all of them. But if this kid can get it for free and he makes money off of it, he's going to want to know what else are they selling? What else are they buying and selling? And then he's going to be like, yo, bro, you made me, it could be $100 or it could be $2,000. He's going to be like, yo, you made me X amount of money off this product, and now I want to join your program because I want to see what else you guys are buying and selling. So and do then, you think it's the transparency yeah, when of, like, actually releasing the name, the product, the actual thing? Yes, bro. When you go to my Instagram right now, you'll scroll and you'll see the exact products I've sold in the past and the exact products I'm selling right now. And I'll show you how much I'm making off of them. I'm, I'm showing you me shipping them. And I'm, like, on my way to get more. I'll literally put that in the caption. And then people will see that and they're like, wow. Okay, if he's still buying them, that means I can go buy them, and I don't even have to join his course. All I got to do is just do the same thing he's doing, mm-hmm. and they're going to see, like, um, results from that, and then they're going to be like, oh, okay, bet, you know, I want to join. Yeah, it just your- makes it a no-brainer. It's like, this is what I've, I've already made money from this guy for free. Why don't I not just pay him from the yeah. money I made from him? Exactly. And just learn more how to make more. So you feel like the transparency between you and your audience. Mm-hmm. When you're transparent and you're actually, see what a lot of people um, don't realize, you know, Grant Cardone, for example, he has a course, um, but you might, you can't connect with Grant Cardone. It's super yeah. hard, it's hard to, to get in touch with him. Right. Yeah. So with me, you can DM me. I might not reply within the first day, maybe, but I'll reply. And I'll reply to you and I'll be like, hey, bro, thanks for hitting me up, blah, 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 blah. How can I help? And they're like, damn, I'm so surprised you replied. And when I hear that, I'm like, damn, imagine all the other people if they DM'd in the past and they haven't replied to them. Yeah, but because losing out on money. Yeah. And because I'm replying to them and I'm seeing their DM. I'm about to close this sale. And it builds that relationship. Yeah. And people will be bragging about, look, I got 100 unread DMs. Congrats. You just skipped out yeah, on you just 20 missed, bands. Yeah, you just missed money. Like, Me, bro, I try I to totally get back to that. as many DMs as possible. Yeah, some like, of them I can read. I'm like, all right, he's bullshitting. But some of yeah. them I could read. I'm like, all right, this guy's actually interested. And yeah. I'm going to answer his questions. I'm not saying I'm 100% going to close this guy and um, have him join my program. But... I'm going to at least give him some type of value. So maybe in the future, he'll come back. And I've had that happen before. Like I've had people say, hey, bro, I appreciate you in the past. You helped me out, blah, 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 blah. I think I'm ready to join now. I'm like, bet, invoice, boom, sent, boom, paid, lit, boom, (laughs) email, sent. It's too easy. Like when you do that, you know, you're not going to get everybody, but you're going to at least secure you're going to convert some. some because that's literally our job is to respond to DMs. Like, yeah. what the fuck else are we doing? You yeah, if I'm saying? not on Instagram posting or responding to DMs, I'm lacking. Like, Facts. straight up. Oh, yeah. I 100% agree with that. And I've seen some of the same similar interactions. Hey, so we're slick almost at the last 10 minutes. So I want to take this 10 minutes for you guys just to talk about 
what we can expect forward for the end of 2020. I know you got a lot in store. You got a lot in store and you got a lot in store. I feel like, you know, we got to share it because you're fucking broken. I'm getting you a plaque for Christmas. That's going to say William Rivera yeah. broken. <laughs> I'm going to break it too before I bring it. But anyway, what do we got in store for the end of 2020? Because uh, I'm excited. So, okay, we got that trip that I'm excited about from the 12th to the 14th. Turn up. Then yeah. uh, November 19th, I actually partnered up with Amazon Scout. Um, they're a product research tool for Amazon. They have around a, like a 500,000 customer base. I'm throwing a free webinar with them, basically showing people how to s- sell their first profitable product on Amazon. So that's going to be dope. You know, there's going to be a lot of people watching live and a lot of people watching the replay. So it's going to be cool for for them to have me on there and for me as well, just to grow my brand. And then literally the day right after that is the Gwinnett Chamber Small Business Awards. So I was nominated as a finalist. Well, Ecom Degree University was as a finalist to win an award. So hopefully, you know, we bring one of those home. That's going to be cool, too. We will. And then uh, the week after that is Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So, I mean, <laughs> coming up. That boy's lit. That boy's lit. We were saying so much in such a small amount of time. That boy's lit. Where can we go to watch the webinar? And where can we go to see you win the award? Because you're going to win the right, award. So I'm going to drop a YouTube video, which is like an invitation to the webinar. It's going to have a sign-up link down below. <laughs> so just be on the lookout for that. Um, again, shout out to Amazon Scout for picking me to be on there. But uh, yeah, it's free. You can attend. And uh, once I get the exact like time of when it's going to be, I'll announce it. But it, it's going to be everywhere. I'll post it on my Instagram, Facebook, whatever. You know, just be there. And if you're not there live, you can watch the replay. So. And if you don't watch the replay, yeah, what are you even doing? If you don't watch doing? the replay, then you're, you're tweaking. Yeah, yeah at that you point, you're doing? tweaked. What are you even yeah. doing? So what about you, boss? She, so We're dropping just like Will said, I'm excited for the next podcast. We're going to be in Florida. Um, fucking somewhere, yeah, we're gonna right? be turned up. Yeah, and then the following week is what Black Friday, I believe, or oh, no? Shit. Well, the so basically, I'm that, just gonna yeah. be p- announcing my um, case study to my students mm-hmm. only. Only they Literally. will have that early before Black Friday, and then on Black Friday, I'll be releasing new hoodies, merchandise for not only my students, but I will release another hoodie for um, people on my Instagram. And then I will be updating all my videos on REC that I've been working on every single day. And then as of that's really it, to be honest, like I'm just excited to improve my business and provide more information. I just want to throw a side note in there. I got a little preview into the case study. Literally, bro. Oh, yeah. I sent it to Charbel for free. This man was hitting me up for questions. I was like, bro, case study. (laughs) Literally broken. But anyway. Man, so... Yeah, I'm excited for the NEQ4. Um, you know, a lot of my stuff is real estate related. So, um, you know, we have our property we've been working the flip. on. flip. Yeah, so, you know, we're obviously part in a, in a fix and flip right now. So we literally just got to paint it nice white. We're doing the outsides. You know, we, like, really been, like, visualizing this project. So to see it come to fruition is pretty dope. Um, we got all the appliances and everything. So we should be finished and listing it, um, you know, in November, maybe mid to late November. Looking to sell anywhere from three twenty to three hundred fifty thousand dollars, which is you know probably the height of that neighborhood. So if we can get that, that'd be super dope to kind of create kind of the highest comp in that neighborhood. Uh, we just made an offer on a condo um, near Trust Park or not Trust Park Battery Park. What's about the battery? Whatever. No, up it there. Is, it's truest or tr- truest, something like that. Anyway, trust, anyway, it's yeah. a nice part. In, um, it's a nice part up there in Cobb County. Um, it's going to be a quick rehab, literally three weeks, three weeks in and out. Um, a lady that, um, I think was a probate lead. She, uh, one of her family members died, unfortunately. So she's looking to kind of, you know, do an estate sale and sell that property. So we made an offer to her all cash, hoping to help her out. And, um, she said to respond to us tomorrow. So I'd love to scoop that up. That'd be my first time doing simultaneous flips. That'd be super dope for me and my team. Um, and our other investors as well. Um, so hopefully we can sell this property in November, buy another one in November, um, and then it's looking to scale SMU. I've been learning a lot of marketing tactics from these guys here um, and just utilizing them and just selling the business to, you know, five figures plus a month, giving more value. My boy, Matt, he's been dropping a lot of value in the, in the group chat. So just trying to help more people, trying to grow, you know, we're at 1,300 students right now, trying to get to 1,500 at least before the end of the year um, and just keep pushing, man. But yeah, so that's, that's it for me. Nothing crazy, but... I'm just excited to see how we can all grow together in our friendship and to see how we can eat together, man. So It's nothing but love. I want to go ahead and thank everybody who's been tuning in. Uh, Next episode, we're going to be somewhere special. 
Dooley's gonna down a whole bottle. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so yeah, um, we're gonna be somewhere special. We're gonna make it happen for y'all. But uh, just want to go ahead and shout out the the Hustle Up podcast and group for having us at their event. Oh yeah, that was uh, that yeah, was dope. That was cool. that was it was dope. great. It was great. I was talking to um I was talking to Jock and he was talking about how you know they went an eight after and you know they were talking about their event. But we're gonna be having an event sometime in the future once COVID dies down. Once things are able yeah. to get out there just something so where you know people can come interact kind of have some like uh you know talking points meet and greet we're gonna make it happen for you guys stay tuned but for everybody who's been tuning in and who's been loyal once again if you guys want to send in personal questions we will answer them for you because if you've been watching up until this point you're a dedicated loyal fan so we appreciate you we appreciate everybody that's been tuning in and you know last but not least does anyone have any closing words stay profitable stay profitable yeah, just get yeah. this bread, man. <laughs> get this stay bread. Stay profitable. Cyber Monday, bro. Yo, stay profitable. Yeah, get ready for Cyber Monday, man. Don't play yourself. Bro, yeah, don't don't be ass this year. Yeah, don't be ass. If That's... you just sell something. Sell, sell, sell something. You got time. You got time. Yeah. Sell something. You sell have like, exactly a lot of people... three weeks from today, November yeah. 6th. Don't done, overthink guys. it. Just... Just if you jump know, in, if you man. see someone else selling some shit, just sell the same shit. <laughs> this is literally your message here to just sell some shit, bro. December, I'm gonna be flex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you gotta sell flex. it because Will's gonna be flexing. So yeah, what the hell? If you don't sell it, we're gonna buy it, man. So appreciate <laughs> well, you guys tuning in. Episode five, and hey, just like every other time, my name's Charbel Milan. We got Agent Dooley, Alexis Montoya, William Rivera, and this has been a time shared. Wi-Fi Lit Series Episode 5. Thank you so much. Peace.